Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Argo, and it stars Ben Affleck, Brian Quinston, Alan Arkin, John Goodman, Tate Donovan, Victor Garber, Scoop Maneri, Scoop Maneri, Roy Cochran, Christopher Denham, Carrie Bechet, and Cal Chandler. And Ben Affleck also directs this film as well. As the film opens, on November 4, 1979, the American embassy in Iran was invaded by Iranian revolutionaries and several Americans are taken hostage. However, six managed to escape from the official residence of the Canadian ambassador and the CIA is eventually ordered to get them out of the country permanently. With few options, uh, infrastructure expert Tony Mendez, played by Ben Affleck, devised a daring plan is to create a fake Canadian film project looking to shoot in Iran and smuggling the Americans out of its production crew. With the help of his trusty Hollywood contacts, studio managers played by John Goodman and Alan Arkin, Mendez creates the Rus and proceeds to Iran as associated producer. However, time is running out with the Iran security forces closing in on the truth while both of his charges and the White House have graves doubts upon the operation themselves. Well, I actually uh, enjoyed the film for what it was. This was the third film that Ben Affleck has ever directed prior to his previous outings, uh, Gone Baby Gone, which stars his brother, Casey Affleck, and The Town, which he also stars in the film along with the rest of the cast including Jeremy Renner and when I heard about this movie I knew about that there was a story behind the hostage situation back in 1979 when Jimmy Carter was president they were having some issues on, on getting rid of the hostages that were stuck in Tehran since they were having a lot of protesters going around and a violent rage nearly fretted the whole country since Dalai Lama was still around before his death later on. I guess it was very impressive that they had to do the story about what, what it was going to be like if they were going to have them escape from, from the country they were in and having to get them out of there. Well, I like some of I like the look of the film. It does feel like it was made in the 70s. It does have that 70s look to it. In fact, at the beginning of the film, there was the classic Warner Brothers logo, which was the slash, the, which resembles a W with a, a black TV tube, which is often used in now on record companies for WEG, Warner Music Group and home video releases. In fact, it's still used today. It's kind of interesting to see that classic logo again on screen. It, it does have a great cast. Um, while it doesn't have much uh, character development, it does sport some uh, interesting uh, moments. I like the fact that they managed to get some of the shots in different camera angles. Uh, one was done in film which captures the spirit of what it looked like because you can still see the black border on the sides and then the rest was just all widescreen all the way I also enjoy the aspects of what was going on you know, I, I like the idea why they were trying to make a, a fake film but it looked like it was never going to happen it almost looked like they were going to do a B movie like a B science fiction uh, film but suddenly <laughs> They wanted to set it in, in Iran in order to get these hostages out of there. And, and they posed themselves as the film crew. So it was just kind of amazing how they did that. And I also recognized some of the actors in this movie too. Uh, Tate Donovan was one of them. 
Also, Kyle Chandler, as usual, playing one of these um, different characters. I, you know, nowadays he's pretty much in a lot of movies nowadays uh, after his TV series Early Edition, uh, as well as Homefront. So it's good to see that he's doing something more. Uh, I think he definitely needs to start doing movies more often. Because he's actually very good at it. But, I, but he always will be Gary Hobson to me. <laughs> now, I'm not a big fan of Ben Affleck, to be fair. Don't get me wrong. I really did enjoy him in some movies. Mostly the Kevin Smith films and maybe some other ones. But, you know, I'm glad to see that he's, he's going right on track as becoming a director and a writer. Well, he didn't write the screenplay for this, but he's, but he's actually very good at doing this. And... And the fact that he's portraying a, a different character that's based on the, the real life person. And considering that he's also liberal too. He had been making some bad movies somewhere in, in late 90s, early 2000s. And, and until he finally went back to its roots uh, on doing movies like Gone Baby Gone and The Town. Uh, so I'm glad he's no longer doing those, those really bad films such as Armageddon. Pearl Harbor, Geely, you know, those films. I mean, those were terrible. Um, this is exactly what Affleck should be doing nowadays when it comes to films that he's making. Because I think he'll definitely one day will become, as uh, as we speak, he'll be able to do more movies like this one. So, um, I definitely recommend this movie for everybody who hasn't seen this. Because I think this is a very interesting story about what happened and how they... How they live for all of this that that happened over there in Iran. In fact, it, it's kind of scary when you think about it. When but all of this that happened in the past, that's pretty much what happened in today's uh, generation, which is not very perfect as far as I'm concerned. But hopefully, it's going to earn some Academy Awards, and I hope it does too. But I know there'll be other movies too that's also going to be nominated. So hopefully, this will will turn out to be okay. But anyway, you should definitely check this film out. It's worth watching. So I give Argo four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.